In this video, I'll be reviewing an OS based on Fury BSD with a slight scientific twist. Although this is Solo BSD by the same developer, it's really not the same Solo BSD which was out a couple of years ago. Then it was based on Hardened BSD, uh, whereas this one is based upon Fury BSD, well, the now sadly gone Fury BSD, which is based upon FreeBSD 12.2. Right, this is a live session, so I'm going to test it on the good old uh, test machine, the specs are on screen. And I know that this is based on Fury BSD, and it's done by a very nice chap who is studying physics at the moment at university. So he wanted to put together an OS that was, in his own words, a small, ready-to-run FreeBSD, and really just make it tailor-fit whatever need you have. So in this instance, he's using it for uh, educational purposes, mainly for himself, but he's open to suggestions, or maybe for, uh, in, in the style of scientific Linux, if you remember that. Um, so you could have a free BSD, uh, which is spun with educational software or scientific software. And I think this is a really good idea. But anyway, let's have a look at the, a very nice XFCE desktop. If you're saying it looks familiar, that's because it is. It's, it's more or less Fury BSD. Uh, with one or two different touches, but basically unchanged. From an earlier version of Fury BSD, there you've got trash can, file system, home, configure XOR, configure Wi-Fi, and install Fury BSD. So it even retains the, uh, the moniker. And you've got your virtual desktops. You've got your calendar. And your date. Uh, you've got notifications and volume, of course. Looking at the menu, uh, there's going to be no surprises here, but there are one or two things which are, uh, are personalized um, for the developer. You've got your usual array of um, accessories. Uh, development, you've got Gini or Genie. Education, you've got GeoGebra, which I'll show you later. Graphics, you've got Geeky. Uh, internet, you've got Firefox, WeChat, and WP GUI for the uh, wireless. Multimedia, you've got Pulse Audio and Web Cominoid. You've got what configure Wi-Fi, configure XOR, which is available on the uh, desktop. And the usual array of uh, little applications to tweak the settings, etc. And uh, Sys Control View, that's nice. And, and two terminal emulators, which, you know, this is good because some people prefer one or the other. Right-clicking on the desktop brings up the usual uh, menu, which is basically what we've just seen. We'll have a look at XFCE. And I like this. It gives you a nice little rundown of the system. It's quite nice. So, okay, that's the basic rundown. Um, I'll have a look at the desktop. There's obviously not going to be many wallpapers there because he's, he's really not uh, in for the, uh, the aesthetics of this. But uh, if anyone wants to design some and send them into him, he's, he's a great chap, and I'll think that he'll actually include it into the next version. And yeah, so there you go. Very nice. So if we go down to... Uh, what am I looking for? Yeah, display. If you notice when you log in uh, for the live session, it uses the default VGA, I should imagine, uh, which is quite a very low resolution, but guaranteed to work with almost every display, which is a good thing. So there's no... You're not going to come across a blank screen. And oh, that's unusual. I've never seen, uh, never seen it look like that. So look at KLD stat, and yes, you've got uh, various things. You've got ZFS. You've got Linux loaded up. There's not going to be any uh, graphics drivers because we haven't chosen that yet, which I'll show you later. And that's one good thing about this. It's early versions of Fury BST was very compatible with almost every uh, graphics card, so you would always guarantee to get a desktop. And if we have a look at top. You can see the memory usage is, well, yeah, it's not too bad at all, which is uh, very nice. And uh, we'll look at the, the live directory structure. So keep it nice and simple, I think. So yes, uh, nice and plain. Um, if we open up a terminal, we'll have a look at uh, some terminal applications that is included, which is Toot. And that's for Mastodon, uh, something which I don't use, but I'll have to have a look at that. There's also, there is also RTV, which is for Reddit, which is a 
pretty cool because I, I use Reddit quite often. And we'll just clear this. It's also included HTOP, which is not a personal favorite of mine, but you know, some people like it. We've got WeChat. These are some great terminal applications, by the way. There's also W3M uh, hyphen image there as well. And, and for the graphical applications that is included, there's R, GeoGebra, GNU Plot, Gini, and Geeky. And we'll have a look. And we'll have a look after we've installed SolarBSD. Right, the installation process is straightforward. Uh, as you say, it uses ZFS by default. We'll just go down the uh, we'll just go down the options. We'll just leave everything more or less as it is, telling it that we're using uh, OneDrive. It'll do its magic, and we'll speed through this. Right, we've got the password, and we type a new password. And we're going to add those two groups uh, in a bit, if I can remember. So, username is going to be RoboNuggy. And of course, it's RoboNuggy. I'll leave that empty. I'll leave that on. Uh, well, wheel, uh, video. I can't remember what else it said. I'm going to put operator. I'm sure there's one other thing. Uh, login shell default. I'm going to choose uh, SH. I know that he chose MKSH, um, which I'm, I'm not familiar with, but I'm just going to use SH as default. Uh, defaults for these. And password. And there we go. It's as easy as it always is on FreeBSD. Pass through all these. We're going to reboot into the newly installed system. And password that we created. Very nice. It actually runs really quickly on this system. Right, if we install Xorg, or configure Xorg, it gives us two choices, Intel or NVIDIA. I'm going to use NVIDIA. And I've already done this before where I've chosen 340. Um, but I think in this instance, I'll choose 390. It's not an up-to-date graphics card, so I don't want, to, don't want to put the latest one in for it not to work. And the installation process for this is, is, is wonderful. So, so you can see it's deleting 340, which I previously uh, I installed that manually just to test it out. But the install process for uh, configuring Xorg is a wonderful thing. And that's one thing I always did love about uh, Fury BSD. I'm just going to reboot to get rid of the possibility of a, a graphics card mismatch in drivers. And there we go. Yes, you can already see that it's worked. So that's pretty cool. Like I say, installing graphics drivers uh, with Fury, Fury BSD is uh, is almost like a painless uh, experience. I expect something to go wrong, but it's it's never let me down yet. And it's such a shame that Fury BSD went away, but yeah. And there's uh, as long as they're active projects to keep it alive, then that's okay. So I can delete these uh, files now because these icons now because it's already been done. I don't know if he'll be working on something to remove the files after. Uh, install but it's not a big deal we just uh, tidy up the desktop it's very configurable and if you really want to get free BST up and going in a rush this will be an excellent way to do it I mean it's practically bare bones I mean there's one or two things that he's put in but beyond that it's not really been altered so this really would be a, a fast and quick way to get free BSD running with a, uh, a pre-configured desktop XFCE yes but it wouldn't be difficult to install another one uh, as well right let's have a look uh, terminal we're just going to install uh, Linus to do a little test. I haven't done one of these for a while. So yes, the, uh, Linus audit system. And there we go. And oh, very nice indeed. Six day. That's not bad. I mean, there's no firewall running. Tells you that you could set up obviously and tweak a few of the settings, but six day. Is not bad at all. FreeBSD out of the box is roughly about 56. And there we are, lot FreeBSD, 12.2 release P3, patch set 3. And let's have a look at some of the GUI uh, applications that I was talking about earlier. Um, GeoGebra. 
which I presume is a maths, uh, a, a maths application. I don't know the first thing about it and how would you use it, I don't know. And there's the details for anyone who wants to know, so it's, it's more or less up to date. It's very nice if I knew how to use it. And, and what was the other one? That was Geeky, I think. There we go. So he uses this one as well. Again, I don't know much about it. I think it's just a, uh, a uh, nice viewing application. And... Yeah, I can't find what it also was. No. Oh, well, there's Gini, of course. Let's have a look at Gini. Or Genie. And it's a integrated development environment. So very nice indeed. Thoughts? Well, um, the developer, he, call, he doesn't label himself as a developer. He labels himself as a user who wanted to put together a, uh, a FreeBSD, FuryBSD uh, based OS that suits his needs. But you know, I mean, and he also studied, he's studying physics at the university, so his time is precious. But still, he's done a good job. I think he's, he, he's onto a good idea. If you could tailor make, if you could have a tailor made FreeBSD to suit different environments, um, in the same way, I'm not saying that's like Splinter like Linux does, but so like if you could have an educational based FreeBSD out of the box, ready to go with all the educational tools you want. I mean, yes, you can You can have education tools to fit different uh, year groups, of course. You've got primary, middle, and then upper. <coughs> I must apologize, I think my voice is going, which is typical. Um, if you could have education for all different grades, and then perhaps, you know, see what goes on from that, that would be an excellent idea. Or have a scientific-based um, OS, like Scientific Linux, where you could have more advanced um, Physics or mathematical programs. I see. It's an interesting idea because I'm at a moment, you know, FreeBSD is not suffering from the same uh, blow as uh, Linux does in the sense of uh, there are too many distros there. You know, FreeBSD is the base system that we have. I mean, you can build up and make it your own. You've got GhostBSD, which is aiming to be a desktop friendly, uh, out of the box system, which it does very, very, very well. You've got NomadBSD, which is aiming to be a mobile portable OS. Which, again, it does it very, very, very well. And one of the new kids on the block is Hello System, which is aiming to be... I don't know, I don't know is it? He's aiming to be an out-of-the-box Mac experience, or a Mac-like experience, of course. Which, again, is unique. So, and the, there are others, of course, who are popping up. It just depends whether they want to continue with them. But I think FreeBSD is it's in a great position where you've got individuals or groups of individuals who are making different versions of FreeBSD or derived from uh, FreeBSD, and they are different from each other. So yes, um, that's it really. This also will be an excellent uh, jumping off point for anyone who wants to put their own uh, system up, or if you just want to install FreeBSD, very lightweight, very quick, using XFCE, download this, it'll be up to date for the latest FreeBSD, job done. But anyway, I'll leave a link to the, uh, the project's website, and... Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Well done if you've made it to the end of the video, and if you've found it useful in any way, then please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps the channel grow so that I can keep on making content that helps the FreeBSD community grow as well. Um.